What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another recipe video just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so. Now today I'm bringing you a recipe for a delicious ketogenic fudge. And this one actually took a lot of work. So if you want to do me a huge favor and share this on your social media, if you really like this recipe, I would really appreciate it. Now, the reason I want to get into all these kind of like keto sweets lately is because the holiday season is upon us and that means that you're gonna have a lot of temptation. So I want to put the tools in your arsenal so that you guys can stay on track through this season. Now, as always guys, if you decide to make this or any of our recipes, go and tag us on Instagram at Black Sheep Keto and use the hashtag Black Sheep Keto for a chance to be featured at the end of every single recipe video. Now, if that sounds good to you guys, let's get right into the recipe. All right, everybody, welcome to the recipe. Now, you see all of our ingredients laid out in front of us for our keto fudge. Now, regular fudge pretty much consists of chocolate chips and a sweetened condensed milk, but obviously we can't use a store-bought sweetened condensed milk, so we're gonna have to make our own. So let's step through the ingredients here. It's a really simple recipe, and I think you guys are gonna love it. So right here, we have two cups of heavy whipping cream, one quarter teaspoon of pink salt, one and a half teaspoons of liquid stevia. Now, guys, I am using these one from Sweet Drops, this one is 24 times sweeter than sugar. If you are uh, buying stuff online, be careful with the sweetness because I have seen stevia that goes up to 300 times sweeter than sugar, which will obviously oversweeten this recipe. In addition to that, we have one bag of Lily's semi-sweet chocolate chips and a half cup of chopped walnuts. This is totally optional if you like it in your fudge. So anyway, let's get going on this. The first step is to make our sweetened condensed milk. So we're gonna need our pot on a medium low heat Add our two cups of heavy whipping cream directly into the pot. And then in this, we're gonna throw our stevia and our salt. Now go ahead and give this a stirring. This is probably gonna be the longest part of the recipe right here is making our sweetened condensed milk. So what I like to do is Keep an eye on it until the first major bubble up. You'll know what I mean when I see it. It's just gonna really quickly foam up and you're just gonna wanna whisk through that. After that, you're gonna go ahead and uh, let it go for about 20, 25 minutes and stir it every two to three minutes to keep it from sticking to the bottom. Now, when you're done, you should be reduced to about half the liquid that you started with. So, I'll show some clips of me doing this and we'll catch up once that's done. All right guys, I think I would just take a second here and show you guys what I meant by the first bubble up. You'll see how this is starting to foam in the center. Um, the first time it happens to do this, it can come up really quick, almost like a pot of water overflowing. So just make sure you're stirring through that and breaking up that foam. Once you've done that, that's a sign that your heavy cream has reached the proper temperature. So just keep it around that same temperature where it did that and stir it every two to three minutes for about 20 to 25 minutes until it's reduced by half. And uh, once mine's about ready for there, I'll catch up and show you guys how you can tell exactly when it's ready. So I'll talk to you guys in just a few minutes. All right guys, as you can see, we're getting to that point where it's done. You should see the bubbles kind of starting to stay when they bubble up. When you whisk it and uh, run your whisk through it, you should be able to kind of throw a little wave and see kind of the streak that you followed. That's a good indicator that it's done in addition to the fact that it has reduced by about 50%. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my burner. And we just kind of wanna mix this until it stops foaming up. And then we're gonna transfer it into a bowl right there. All right guys, as you can see, it's uh, stopped bubbling, so it's probably a safe temperature to put in a glass bowl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just pour it in here. You can tell that that's a, uh, let me try it the other way so you can see a little bit better. You can see how nice and thick that is. That is a really good sweetened condensed milk. And if you guys wanted to use this for something other than the fudge, at this point you could put it in a jar and uh, stick it in your fridge for about a week and use it for whatever other things you want uh, sweetened condensed milk for. So right now, this is gonna be way too hot to pour our chips directly in. So we wanna give it two to three minutes to cool down just a little bit. You still want it hot enough to melt the chips, but not so hot that it's gonna cause them to separate because when you overheat chocolate, the uh, cacao butter will come out of it and you'll get this greasy, filmy layer on top of chocolate and it's pretty much ruined. So if that happens to you, it was just too hot. So give this two to three minutes to cool down. Now I wanna talk about chocolate. Now, as you guys see, I am using the semi-sweet and this will produce an obviously semi-sweet fudge. I have done this with milk chocolate, and if you are a big fan of like really sweet fudge, the milk chocolate chips work really well. But for me, having been keto adapted for so long, it's just a little too sweet, so I'm going with the semi-sweet. And uh, you can obviously use the dark chocolate as well, but for me, that was just far too bitter. So that's the explanation there. 
All right, everybody, I reset things a little bit, but what I have here is I poured my chocolate chips into a microwave safe bowl and microwaved it for 30 seconds, stirred it, another 30 seconds, stirred it. As soon as the chips are a liquid, go ahead and pull them out. You don't want to overdo it or your chocolate can seize, which is never a good thing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pour this directly into our sweet condensed milk. As a note, if you don't like microwaves, you can actually melt this chocolate in a double boiler setup, kind of like we did when we made chocolate in the last recipe that I posted. And then we're gonna go ahead and give this a mixing and try to mix it really well into our sweetened condensed milk. Once that looks like it's mixed well, go ahead and add in your walnuts and give it a stir. And now it's time to pour it. So what I have here is an eight by eight casserole dish that I have lined with some parchment paper just to make extraction a little bit easier. And then we're gonna go ahead and just fill this up. If you don't want to line it with parchment paper, that's fine. It'll just kind of take a little bit of force from a fork or a knife to kind of pop them out. But I wanted them to come out super easily just for the purposes of filming and taking photos of the finished product. Now I am going to go ahead and give this just a little bit of a spread to kind of make sure that the top's nice and even. You can even give it a little couple taps if you want to make sure it's extra even. Now we're going to go ahead and stick this in our refrigerator for about an hour. Now I know what you guys are thinking, never put fudge in a refrigerator. And that is completely true if there is sugar in here, but there is no sugar in here and therefore we cannot mess up the crystalline structure of the sugar. So we can actually expedite our cooling process by putting this in the refrigerator for about an hour. Once that's done, I will catch up with you guys and uh, show you the finished product. And now that you guys have seen the recipe, it is time for the taste test. So I have a whole plate of our delicious fudge right here and I let it sit out overnight. Now, after I pulled it out of the fridge, it was still a little bit kind of gooey, but once you let it cool for another couple hours outside the refrigerator, that goes away and you can see here, it doesn't stick to your hands at all. And I'm just gonna come in a little bit and show you guys the texture real quick. Now that looks pretty awesome now, doesn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste. Guys, that is really, really freaking good. Now, the texture is perfect. It leaves a nice little bite mark in there. You can even see my teeth. So, you know, it's kind of got that creamy gooeyness of it that you love from fudge. It's nice and sweet, very creamy, and the nuts add a really nice crunch to it. So, I would consider this to be the perfect keto fudge. And the reason being is we made it just like we would regular fudge. We just kind of modified the sweeteners to make this keto friendly. So, I hope you guys like this recipe. Again, if you like it, go ahead and share it on your social media because it helps me out a lot. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one. And if you're interested, here is this week's Creator Spotlight. Now this week's Creator Spotlight goes out to Sista Jess on Instagram for making her own version of our keto donuts and also capturing the texture, which I kind of failed to do in the video. So first of all, thank you guys for making these donuts and I really appreciate everybody who's made them because I've seen these pop up a lot and that kind of gives me feedback that you guys have really been liking them. Now here's what Sista Jess did a little bit differently. She didn't have any heavy whipping cream on hand, so she ended up using unsweetened almond milk to make these, and it resulted in that really cool color in the glaze, so I thought that was awesome. Additionally, she did a great job of capturing the texture of the donuts, which is something that I failed to do in the video, so I really wanted to spotlight her and give you guys a chance to see what these donuts actually look like. So make sure you check out at Sista Jess on Instagram, and check us out at Black Sheep Keto, and with that guys, I will see you in the next one.